Welcome to Canis Design Systems Pointwise Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. In this video, we'll finish our discussion of the global tab by going over the features in the advanced frame. Here we have again our half symmetry model of the drone. I've already run automatic surface mesh, mostly using the default values to give us something to compare against. And I've changed the algorithm to hybrid so we can more easily see the isotropic versus anisotropic regions. Let's expand the advanced frame, which contains settings that give you a bit finer control over different aspects of the resulting surface mesh. The edge assembly angle allows you to specify a turning angle for joining adjacent connectors along quilt boundaries. If the turning angle between two connectors is less than the specified value, they will be joined into a single connector. The hard edge angle is also a turning angle, but it's used to classify edges as concave and convex. If we quickly peek over at the boundaries tab and highlight the convex filter, all of the edges in this filter are in the region of the nozzle exit and fins. If I want to also target this edge here, I can go back to the global tab, lower the hard edge angle a bit, and now we can see that that edge was also identified as convex. Once you have all of the attributes set up how you want, you can use the refinement factor to quickly generate a grid family. This will apply the refinement factor to all of your resolution settings the min and max subdivisions, and any resolution filters you have on the surfaces tab. Values less than one can be used to coarsen, and values greater than one to refine. Map subdivision ratio is used to automatically identify long, thin surfaces that are suitable for map meshing. Automatic surface mesh will compare the number of subdivisions on the long and short sides of a four-sided quilt, and if the ratio is greater than this mapped ratio, it will apply the map meshing treatment to the quilt. We will go over the map meshing in more detail in the video on the surfaces tab. Boundary proximity influence controls which edges are used for mesh adaptation on the interior of domains. The default by orientation usually works well as it prevents small clustering on one side of the geometry from bleeding through to the other side, but you could also choose all or none. The final two settings allow you to tweak buffer regions in the surface mesh. The boundary gap subdivisions allows you to specify a number of subdivisions across small gaps in the surface mesh. Let's zoom into the center body where we see this narrow domain. Currently, it has a resolution of about one cell across that gap. So let's increase it to five. Similarly, the stretching buffer allows you to specify the number of subdivisions between colliding anisotropic fronts. Let's look at the trailing edge. This domain has T-Rex growing off of the upper and lower edges, and there is about a three cell buffer between the fronts. Let's increase the stretching buffer to 10 and run Create Surface Mesh again to see the changes. We're still looking at the trailing edge, and we can see that buffer region between the anisotropic cells is significantly larger. Looking at the center body, we now have five to six cells across that gap where previously we had one cell. And finally, looking at the nozzle exit, we now have T-Rex growing off of that feature edge we targeted with the hard edge angle setting. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button or subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, drop us a line below or connect with us via LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.